want to glorify and magnify and exalt your incredible name. As we get you step in because of Yeshua on the cross, opening up the gateways, allowing us to be seated in, in him, in heavenly places, as a king, governing from out of the four faces of our Father into the kingdom that he gave us to have dominion over to have understanding and revelation inside of knowledge to perceive the counsels of heaven to come out of that dimensional realm into the earth and only do what I see and saw my father do stand in creation covering up every part of it with the image of my creator as it overshadows me as it enhances and propels me deeper and deeper into all of who he is. It give me an understanding of my identity and who I am. The full knowledge of the image that I was created in. And the power that Yahweh has given us as sons and daughters. To come out of the kingdom of heaven with into the earth. Lord I pray that you open us up for this knowledge. I pray that you open us up for this understanding. Lord let's begin to walk in these full revel revelational gateways that you've opened up for us. I ask Father Joel, show us, reflect to us everything that's needed to be projected from out of the kingdom of heaven into the earth through us. As we grow and mature in our sonship, as we begin to understand more daily who we are and begin to operate in our function. Father, let's see the power in it and let's begin to change the nations into what it's supposed to be according to the blueprints being released daily. We love you, we honor you, Father. We come together in your name, Yeshua, to progress and to grow and to mature, to be tutored, to be trained, to stand in your midst, to be taught, to open ourselves up for all of what you have for us, Father. We love you, my King. Thank you. Amen. Someone mind switching on the light thing, like. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Margie. Hello. Everyone good? Yes. Okay, so uh, what I want to try and do tonight, is this thing okay? Not too loud? I'll fix it. Seems to be okay. The further away I can hold it from my mouth, the happier I am about the whole situation. Hurt your muscles. Yeah, I don't want to flex too much. <laughs> what I want to try and do is uh, kind of remind you, you and kind of take you on that journey of finding your identity. And I always say that, you know, it's almost like we have been in a life of trying to do better, trying to do better, but it's all about actions. It's all about what is good, what is right, what is what is wrong, what I shouldn't do, what I should do. It's, it's, it's almost become uh, a stumbling block, stumbling block to try and be perfect in our own man-made understanding of perfection. But what Yahweh is really trying to open up to us is bringing us to that place where we realize who we are. Outside of what we were taught, what religion has told us is good and bad and what is right and what is wrong. In a position, in a place where we realize and understand exactly who we are. Where we begin to see the light and the power of the glory of who Yahweh has poured into us to become in creation. And to take our authority, to take the power and to take the glory that's given to us and govern what's ours. You guys excited? It's, you know, it's, it's really something. And I know that we know a lot of this stuff, but it's asking these questions, who am I? You know, who am I really? Do I understand the power, the authority, the glory, the fire, the fullness of what Yahweh has placed in me, the image that he created me in, the fact that I'm not creative light, but created light? Mm -hmm. well, I'm, created li I'm not created light, I'm creative light. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> How am I made? You know... Let's understand that this DNA that I carry in my being is the same as what he has in his own image. Wow. Yes. It's almost like we, we forget, but I'm not formed out of the dust of the earth in the measure that I understand that. Because when I was formed, there was no dust, there was no corrosion, there was no death, no destruction. Corrosion and dust, ground, sand comes from corrosion. It comes from the fallen state. We weren't created in the fallen state yet. So what am I made of? And that's just the physical attribute, knowing that the physical attribute of what I was created out of is the spiritual content. So I have the capacity as a fleshly body because that's what had to happen after the fall. Right? We had to be established in a physical realm. That's where we got skinned. 
So now I've got three layers of skin and three has established me in this realm, in this dimension, in this image. And Yahweh is trying to get me back into my original identity, trying to get me back into my original state. Therefore, Yeshua comes and dies on the cross to get me back to my original state. Now that I'm seated in Him and it's no longer I live, but Christ lives in me and I was baptized into His death and uh, raised up in His resurrection... I have a different view of who I am because I'm beginning to realize that now that I'm restored, there's more to me than what there used to be. I have a greater power, I have a greater authority, I have a greater knowledge and insight of who Yahweh is and He's beginning to teach me as a son. As I'm growing out of my, my church mentality, as I'm growing out of my baby state, as I'm coming into my maturity, I'm shifting dimensions and I'm no longer operating on this side of the veil. I'm in my father's house and my father is teaching me. What am I made for? You know, it's like, a, it's like a, let's begin to realize that whatever we think we are made for, whatever we think we have as destiny, whatever we think our purpose is, well, triple it by a billion and then you might have an idea of the responsibility you're about to get from the Father when you grow into your position according to what, who He has called you to be. Because we have such a small mentality. I'm looking after my household right now, which is on my side. It's uh, two, uh, two teenagers, a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old. You know, my ex-wife is looking after the younger ones, and so I still my responsibility, I still speak to them every day, but it's almost like a little bit less of a responsibility. But then I also look at the schools, and that's a responsibility. You guys, in my, in my heart, is a responsibility. You know, but then I have to remind myself, I have grown to such a place in the kingdom of heaven, and I now have new responsibilities within the kingdom of heaven. We always open up gates in my education as a spirit being, where I'm beginning to govern some things in the heavens. No, it's very small portions because I'm still a baby. Are you guys okay? It's just we have to get to the point where we realize that Yahweh is training us and constantly shifting us into higher places and new positions in the kingdom. Why? Because we have to mature to the level that we need to be at to become exactly what we're supposed to be. And I was talking to someone this afternoon and it's really under, it's pivotal for us to understand that as I trade financially, as I grab on a revelation and I shift my thinking or I repent of a sin and I no longer continue in it or I grow my fruit in, 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 in righteousness, I grow my fruit in faithfulness, I grow my fruit in, in love, in, in kindness, I'm growing, something is shifting, something is aligning. I have to remind myself that as I grow, as I mature, as I'm consistently, continuously shifting, the things that I'm trusting God for, the things that I'm looking at and praying for, and the things that I've, I've fasted for, the things that I want to see change in creation, the things I did in the courts, the, 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 uh, the whole dimensional shift that I've seen in my tomorrow that needs to come into play financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, socially, is lining up as I'm operating in the order given to me according to what Yahweh has called me to. So everything is not going to happen instantly. It's not a takeaway gospel. I'm not just going to become what I'm supposed to be tomorrow because someone switched a light out of my head. It's a process of faith. It's a process of me believing. So as I'm aligning things, as I'm doing small little things, giving $20 here, you know, growing my fruit here, going to a meeting, receiving a revelation, trading into it, opening up my understanding more, engaging Yahweh, you're getting in a, a, a revelation for myself, running with it, it opens up. You know, I'm just giving some examples of things that's aligning me, my, my, my desire to worship Him, my worship in His kingdom, the shifting of my understanding, consistently growing in new revelation as the Father opens me up for more and more and more. Eventually, I get to a point in my, my, my gate where things that I trusted Him is now in alignment and things start falling in. And that's the idea. That's what Yahweh is saying. Well, my identity comes as I grow, as I mature. And then everything I need for the time that I'm in, my growth spurt, is, it will come to me as it aligns itself up with the order of activities in my desire and my passion to move forward, to get deeper and closer into the things of Yahweh. Am I speaking Lamborghini? Or are you all looking at me with a tone in your voice? I'm sorry. And now when I speak, I listen to myself and I'm thinking... Wait, do, does people know what you're talking about, or are you just kind of mumbling in your own head? There's people on Facebook that are confused. We're in private. Aww, shame. <laughs> I almost cared there for a second. <laughs> but, but you should be, yeah. Then you'll catch my breath. That was funny. <laughs> that was so fast. <laughs> 
as God has created us uh, all differently, designed us to operate best in particular ways, which we need to discover and understand. See, I was taken us on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a journey where we have to find our mesh. Is that a thing? Is that something we can understand? Yes. Yes. I have to find that thing in which Yahweh has propelled me in. A passion that's driven more than anything else. Uh, a desire in my heart to, to do something that no one else has thought of doing. You know, Yahweh is, is trying to eliminate the things in your thinking pattern that's keeping you from that mesh. From that dimensional one piece that you carry that no one else has. How are you guys feeling? Well, in, we, we, we all have an identity. And that identity is as sons and daughters. But we will start as our spiritual babies. And I remind yourself, it's, it's, not, it's not so much that I'm a baby. Because I don't get born again and now I'm a baby. I have a baby's mentality. I don't understand. Because my spirit is being awakened for the first time. And now it's going into the kingdom. And it's, it's got all the full understanding of what it's doing. But as a soul, and as I've been connected to my spirit for so long, and, I have, and as a soul, I've been in command for so long, and now all of a sudden it's a switch, and I have to realize I'm no longer soul, I'm spirit, and spirit now has to become educated enough and, and connected enough to the kingdom of heaven to be able to pour into the soul to really begin to understand the things that it's seeing and understanding, to change the frame of its revelation, to increase the understanding of what's happening as the spirit band's understanding is getting um, uh, reclaimed from the loss to being bound to the soul in a world that's sin and out of alignment. Right. Right, yeah. It's Yahweh really getting us to understand, well, there's this process and it's really up to you to get the full form and to understand that it's meant to lead you out of that mindset that's boxed. Anything, and, and I know that we don't like this, but uh, this is the, the truth, and I believe in my heart, this is what Yahweh wants to echo into creation for us. Anything that keeps you or stops you or blocks you from, uh, or blocks God or stops God or has a limitation or tell you no, 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 I, I'm telling you right now, it is not full revelation. Mm. Yahweh is an infinite God and He cannot be boxed. So we now say we're Christians, we've boxed Him. We have a Bible, we've boxed Him. This is the way you have to pray, you've boxed Him. This is what you have to stay away from if you're a Christian. We've boxed him. Now I say this and I'm not saying that now all of a sudden I'm giving you a license to go do whatever you want and, and act like a crazy lunigan. No, I'm telling you that Yahweh has set us free and has allowed us in our growth to grow to the measure where anything and everything that comes at me, I have the capacity and the ability to reinstitute or reinstate the original intent or content of whatever comes to me because I am the son of God. <laughs> And have the power to align all that comes to me as a truth. Now you might say, well, what if it's a lie? Then my ability as a son is to align it because nothing can only be a lie. Everything we hear, everything we listen to, everything that comes at us comes from an original truth. And it's my responsibility as one who governs creation to have all the truth, just like Solomon. And that's why he engaged, if we understand that in a natural sense or not in a sense that we've been taught. He had the capacity to speak out of a name because that's what wisdom opens up. It opens up the names of God to us to give us the capacity and the ability to engage to the measure. Amen. You guys okay? <laughs> we must uh, leave behind the slavery of a poverty mentality. Uh, we will get into a little bit more detail about that tonight, but it's really important to change your mindset. And when I talk about poverty, I'm not talking about financial poverty, although that includes it, because it's a mentality. You know, I mean, as a preacher, as a minister, as a Christian, as a saint, as sons of Yahweh, we've been taught that this is a part of Yahweh's plan to humble us. We have to be poor. We have to struggle and suffer financially. It's okay, give all your money away. You know, God will always come back and give you more. And then we do this, some of this, you know, we do some of these things and we don't quite get the response that we want. Well, I've given my tent for the last 10 years, every month for 10 years. That's a certain amount and sevenfold or hundredfold back from that equals to this. And I'm not getting any of that back yet. I'm still waiting. God is not a very good accountant. <laughs> it's like it's not working out for me all that well. It's almost like we're, we're in this understanding 
process and Yahweh is trying to get us out of a method of thinking that blocks us because it's just the way that we've been taught, the way that things have come at us and to us. We have had so many misunderstandings and we had so many lack of, of true revelation coming in. And of course, we've only heard what we're supposed to walk in from one voice. And Yahweh is just bringing a company of people together that will allow themselves to receive from all the act. All the, all the portions and all the access points that's available, if that makes sense. Yes, does. When we are born, in, um, we are in, in an inherent of sense of separation. And let me just explain that. When we are born, we inherit a sense of separation from Yahweh, right? We do not know who He is or who we are created to be in Him. We do not know the wealth of um, he has for us in relationship with him. So we think like someone that is poor. We, we think, we don't think like we're supposed to. Because we can't imagine or fathom the things that Yahweh has for us. Because we have that feeling of separation. Does that make sense? Yeah. When, I, when I go through my own notes, sometimes I can understand what I'm saying. But when I'm trying to bring it across to others, it might not come across the same way. And of course, we're not talking about money. We're talking about Yahweh putting you on a path where you begin to prosper in everything that's meant to come to you. When you begin to understand your, your, your position in the full glory of what He has set out for you to become, and you begin to walk in it, everything that's meant to be yours is attracted to you. Everything comes to you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's that dimensional shift that needs to take place in our thinking. Someone who is of royal birth thinks very different to someone who is not. And we have to learn to think like a child of the King of Kings. So guys, a whole nother way of thinking that needs to come to our place, you know, to our mindset. And Yahweh is really pushing that. I can feel that in the season of our walk with Him. And I say season, I know we are planning and we are trying to get out from under the sun and the moon. But sometimes that's what we understand. You know, where am I right now in this place and position that I'm at in my walk with Yahweh? I need to have revelation of this, 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 and this. How do I get to that point? How do I engage certain things to grow me, to push me into the position that I'm supposed to be in? And, and it's very important for me personally because this is what I do for a living. I teach God's people as much as I can. I have to find myself consistently in a place where whatever I'm teaching, I'm engaging. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm speaking to you, I'm engaged it. And I find that it helps me a hell of a lot to teach you. <laughs> we are in a training process intended to precede that maturity in us. It's Yahweh's desire for us to mature. You know, we've been babies for so long. You know, you can only be a baby for so long. <laughs> and something has to change. Either you're going to die or you're going to grow up. And he's at the point where he's uh, urging the church to grow up, to just begin to understand who we are and to then walk in that fullness. We start out and we understand this. We start out as servants. And then ask any teenage kid or any, any little kid in the house and they'll tell you, I feel like a slave in this house. I have to do everything. Where's the remote? Oh, it doesn't matter. Eat and switch TV on to that, in that station. I don't know if you guys can uh, correlate with that. But in the beginning, this is it. We start as servants. Then we complete the training. We go on to become bond servants, stewards, friends, lords, kings, and sons. Kings and sons. And then become, we grow and mature and we go deeper and higher and wider. And there's no limitations. Increasing levels of authority and power comes with increasing levels of relationship and responsibility. As Yahweh entrusts more and more to us. The closer you get to him, the more intimate you walk with him, the more responsibilities he's going to give you. And let me also remind you, with every responsibility given to you, there's a financial gateway that opens up to you. Because for all the responsibilities we have, there's financial um, gains that has to come. There's financial stability that has to come into place. Am I making sense this evening? Are you all looking at me differently this, this, this evening? Like... Uh, <laughs> There are things in our lives that needs to be disposed of, right? There is a battle, and we understand this, uh, of getting rid of the things that's not supposed to be in our understanding. Now, uh, please understand something. I'm not talking about sin. I'm not talking about actions. It's always the way we think. 
The repentance has nothing to do with sin. As a matter of fact, the reason we're sinning is because of the way we think. Right? So if you change the way I'm thinking, if I'm consistently, continuously, in the presence of Yahweh, engaging with Him, changing the way I think continuously in all matters of life, I'm not focused on sin, I'm not focusing on what I'm doing wrong, I'm not focusing on, on my issues and my quails and my aches and my pains and my irritations and frustrations, I'm getting into the things of Yahweh, I'm spending time in His midst and in His presence as much as I can. Though I'm going through my normal day, doing my normal things, but I've learned and I've trained myself to engage that world and to separate myself from everything around me and to engage that as hard as possible. You know, it's almost guaranteed that you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna go deeper and higher, you're going to change, your, your mindset's going to shift, you're going to grow and mature much faster. That's one of the reasons Paul makes the statement, he says, I pray in tongues more than all of you. And I said this before, and we know this, praying in tongues open up a gateway for the alignment of my spirit, soul, and body into the kingdom of heaven. That's where revelation, knowledge, and insight comes from. That's why it is a gateway, that is a doorway. And if I begin to speak in tongues, you're almost guaranteed to begin to see images. If you can take those images and run with the train of thought that's in your soul, that is taking the imaginative state of your sight into full force, then you'll begin to see more. That's why speaking in tongues is so important, because it's a gateway, it is a, a doorway, it is a porthole. Now, I say, as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ from at all from a slave, although he is the owner of everything. But when the fullness of the time comes, God sent forth his son, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. This is Yahweh's desire for us, to grow into that position where you realize. Now, we have to understand something. If I'm created in his image, if I'm created in his likeness, then I'm always part of his DNA. I'm a child of him. I'm never, not, I'm never, I'm never separated from him except through my mentality and my mindset. So because I'm born into sin, I'm born into the understanding of the separation that's in my heart from God. So I have to regain that in the understanding through my life until I get born from above where I'm fully activated as a spirit being and again begin to long after the things of Yahweh, right? right. But this, the Father is saying, well, once you step into that position in your walk with me where you really truly begin to understand and believe again that you are a son, a daughter of the Most High God and all the attributes and all the things that's supposed to come with a son, a daughter fully walking in the power and the glory of who we are as, as, as Yahweh's children or Yahweh's full um, fullness, it comes evident in our lives, if that makes sense, right? Nice. Yahweh has adopted us into the royal family. Spiritually, we may have separated or, or started out uh, as, as, as poverty-stricken beggars, but when He adopts us, everything changes. You know, and, and I want you to understand this. Once you, you, I would say graduate, I wouldn't say it's a graduation, but once I shifted from this side of the veil to go into the kingdom of heaven, everything changed. Like everything in my life begin to shift, begin to align, sm short, small little things begin to show and pop up and I had different understandings, I had to look at things from different eyes, from different point of views and slowly things began to change. It's Yahweh brings us to an understanding that this is designed to align you. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of His Son into our Hearts crying, Abba, Father. That's always wanting to go deeper, higher, wider. Yahweh calling his people to a deeper place in him. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then heirs through Yahweh. It's really the Father's heartbeat for us to begin to understand that we are in co-creation with him. That he's desiring a company of people that will operate from out of his kingdom and govern with him to understand that I am not a mere man. I'm no longer human. As a matter of fact, I am fully spirit. And my, my revelation in my heart is progressing over my soul to become spirit and over my body to become spirit. Now, you might not believe right now that your body can become spirit, but if Yeshua, as my example, is resurrected on the third and glorious day, and I look at Him in His glorified state, and then walk in the face of the earth for 40 days, ascending into heaven in front of more than 500 witnesses, let me tell you something, we can be glorified in the body right now. It's just a revelational switch that needs to come on. And that's the journey that we're on. That's why intimacy with Him is so key. Because the more I understand Him, the more I believe, the more I receive, the more I perceive, the more I walk in dimensions of revelation, when I begin to understand who my Father is, walk in what He has for me, believe the things that He's saying about me, I will shift into it. It becomes my responsibility to do that. 
and glorified. That was the part we used to think, that's the part we used to think that we would happen after we die. But the revelation Yahweh is revealing to our day, in our day, is that we can be glorified here and now. We can access the realms of glory and the realms of heaven in order to bring heaven to earth through our lives. It's really just the Father saying, well, if we can just begin to understand who we are. It's almost like in the revelation that, that brings that switch back on in my life, the things that's drawn or needs to be drawn to me to get aligned in creation will almost automatically come. It's almost like when you're, and I know this is probably, <laughs> this is probably the worst example that anyone could ever give in church, is when you're sitting at the, at the casino and you hit that slot down, <laughs> I've never done this myself, but it starts running and you get a seven, mm -hmm. and you get another seven, and I don't know if it's still sevens, yes. it might be eights mm -hmm. now, and you get a seven, and you get another seven, then it goes crazy, and sometimes there's seven underneath that, and it goes from all the different sides, that's the major jackpot part, but it's almost like... <coughs> Once everything is aligned to where it's supposed to be, then the floodgates open. <coughs> so that might not have been the best example, but everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and you've seen it, either you've seen it on TV or on your cell phone or somewhere, but once, those, once, once all those sevens align, woohoo, baby! <laughs> I'll be a father to you, and you will be my son. And daughters, says the Lord Almighty. It's funny, he's not asking us. <laughs> he's not asking us to be uh, our, our father. He's not asking us to be his sons and daughters. He says, you will be. <laughs> Hello. How do you guys feel about that? So I, I don't even have a choice. He's taken my choice away in this. <laughs> I don't know if you guys hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable that you grow as a son. It's inevitable that you grow as a daughter. It's, it's not something that will just never take full, full place. You're growing every day. And your spirit is getting to where it's supposed to be. But we have to be in full focus. That's why Yahweh has released uh, sons into the earth to teach this. It might not be many voices. It might not be uh, very loud right now. But those who are in the meetings like this, those who get to listen to Ian and to Justin, and those who get to listen to the ones that are speaking this into the atmosphere, uh, with the breath being released in between the crowds, that's where the real power comes in. And these are the ones that will go into the earth and change nations. Are you guys okay? That's why it's not everybody. Yep. You know, in a big company, you need a handful of leaders to run that entire company. It's funny because uh, it's, it's never the ones that's expected. It's the ones that work outside the places where no one can see what they're doing. It's, it's very important for us to understand we are doing things that's never been done. But we're also doing things that no one can see us do. <laughs> Everyone still okay? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before Him. In love, in love He um, predestined us to adoption as sons through Yeshua the Christ to Himself, according to the kind intentions of His will. Can we begin to understand that Yahweh in His glory and in His love and His passion for His people has placed everything you need in you. We need to discover how to operate it. He's mm -hmm. given us the ability through Yeshua to go in and receive everything. And as we grow and as we mature, and I say this and I want to remind you, on this side of the veil I ask the Father to help me and He helps me. And I can only do that for a season because then I shift and I come to this side of the veil where when I ask the Father to help me, He says, no son, do it yourself. It's a whole new place. I've never had to do it myself. But now I have been taught to do it myself. So now my responsibility is to do it myself. 
Now I've reached a point in my walk on the side of the veil where I got to say, Father, I now trust that you will do it for me because every time over the last uh, five years or ten years I've asked, you have done it. And as I've grown in my faith, the more I ask, the more I receive, the greater the miracles to become. But now I'm shifting because I have tilted the ground because I have taught and as the, the offers that you've given me, I've given all that's supposed to be given. Now you taught me. That means I start over again. I'm at a whole new place. Now, what I used to succeed in and be the best at, I'm right at the bottom with. But it's the progression of growth. That's what happens. Because, I mean, by the, by the, by the time a child can walk, he's, he's literally an expert in crawling. It's true. <laughs> but then he has to stop walking and then he's not very good at it. He sucks at it. And he falls over and over again. Maybe he gets two or three steps in. But eventually he masters that level and he goes to the next level and then there's again stuff that he just can't do until he's practiced and practiced and practiced and mastered it. God has blessed us just as he blessed Adam and Eve with every spiritual authority to bring heaven to earth. We can access these spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yeshua. And it's his desire for us to manifest them here on earth. It always goes back to Genesis 26, 126. For he has created us in his image. And he's given us dominion over creation. It's almost like he calls constantly wants us to get back to the understanding of what our function is here in the earth. It's not in my hands yet. It's not governed by me, so my destiny, my purpose is not over. There's things that need to be done and we can only do it together as the body of Christ and the understanding that needs to come to us. And it's not going to come to us through the ones that we've been looking at. We have to go in and find it for ourselves. Because I'm a puzzle piece that carries the knowledge and so are you. And when the coming together of the knowledge that is in me is spread into the right portions of the puzzle, it gets built. You guys okay? Yes. God always intended to choose us from before the foundations of the world. He wants us to be His fully matured sons and daughters functioning out of him into creation. That is his will, and he is not going to back on it. Yahweh is willing, um, is calling forth our spirits to maturity. It's time for us to think differently, understand differently, engage him differently, pray differently, yeah. meditate differently, step deeper into him, and understand more of what we don't understand, not because of what someone is trying to teach us, but what we have engaged for ourselves. You know, Ian made a statement the other day, and I'm not there yet, but he says, I do not listen to any other preacher or read any other books. Right. You have to get to the point in your walk where you are so confident in your knowledge that you can put it down on paper like Paul and become three quarters of the New Testament. Right. <laughs> wow. Now, I remember talking to some of my mentors, and I, in my heart I promised that I would never teach anything I haven't made my own. Because that's your responsibility. Because whatever's out there is already under the sun and the moon. You can change that by making it your own and adding to the dimensional revelation that's in your call and open to creation. So you have to understand what you receive is not yours until you've made it yours. It's because it comes out of my mouth or it's come out of someone else's mouth and I've taken it and I've put it inside of me and I've kind of made it mine and now I'm breathing it over you. It's your responsibility to breathe what you have with what's coming out of me. To step into my gate and to get what Yahweh has for you there and when you come out of the gate to take everything with you and to begin to make that yours so it becomes one in your DNA. So when you breathe, it comes out and changes the nation. He is calling each of us to our identity as sons. Let us uh, each begin to embrace the fullness of what it means to be a son, a daughter of the Most High God. There's power and authority in what Yahweh wants to release in us. And only once we really truly believe who we are can we walk in the fullness of it. And then I preach this message and I've been thinking to myself the whole time, we're not there yet, we're not there yet, but we have to believe that we can get there. We have to believe that it's not some magical sign and seven steps. It's me, uh, my personal private time engaging with Yahweh and going into every doorway and every gateway that He opens up, trusting and believing that I'm growing and shifting and, and maturing daily, studying, meditating the Word, 
um, finding myself constantly going to places that I haven't been before, allowing Yahweh to minister to me, opening myself up. Exciting, isn't it? Father, we want to glorify and magnify and exalt your incredible name. We want to ask, Father, that you'll shift our thinking to a new place. That you'll take each of us as sons and daughters, Father, as we're growing, as we're maturing, Lord. You will remind us of the things that we need to focus on. Remind us, Father, that we are no longer slaves. We are sons and daughters. The opposition that's coming against us, we have authority, we've got power over it. We enter in as, as, as knowing you as Father, getting to to know you daily, going deeper and deeper into that covenant relationship. Father, you have predestined for us to walk in the fullness of sons. I pray that we will have the understanding of how to get into that position. As you begin to break us into place, Father, and you begin to shift us into alignment, let us have all the understanding that's needed to progress, and to grow into this position with full dominion, taking back our position in creation, aligning all things, and walking with you in full covenant. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you, my King, in the name of Yeshua.